So our first speaker tonight is going to be Pollyanna Reed. And she is a journalist, and she's a senior contributor at Forbes. So many of you have read her articles, and I'm sure you know who she is. But a few things that you probably don't know about Pollyanna is that she has never tasted alcohol in her life. She was a competitive swimmer for 10 years and an Olympic hopeful. She plays a game of chess every night. And this is my favorite. If a guy that she's dating doesn't love Seinfeld, she already knows that they're just not compatible long term. <laughs> Pollyanna, come on up here and share your fuck up. Okay, wow, there's a lot of people here. Cool. Um, all right, so my name is Pollyanna Reed. Thank you for coming. Um, so I'm a full-time entrepreneur. Uh, in true millennial fashion, uh, when my dream job did not exist, I took the liberty to create it. Anyone here created their own job? A few people? Okay, so I am actually a celebrity ghostwriter. I own a full-service ghostwriting agency based out of Toronto, New York, and LA. Um, I've also been a journalist for 10 years. I'm currently a senior contributor at Forbes. And in 2015, I launched a mentorship platform called New Girl on the Block. So I obviously wear a lot of hats. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like miss this whole slide presentation. Um, I, I obviously wear uh, many, many hats. And, um, but the one thing I'm really, really passionate about is helping people see beyond the limits of their circumstances. Because you know this mission is really important to me because I remember there are many times in my life when I had plenty of reasons not to. Um, my past is filled with experiences um, that my past is filled with experiences that made my career path very, very hard to forge. And um, I mean, I don't necessarily think you would expect a girl who failed almost every class in high school, grade 11 and 12 English, grade 10 math and science, like I lived at summer school. Um, I don't think you would expect me to be trusted to write for multi-million dollar executives or pro athletes or founders or politicians. I write their books, I write their keynote speeches and more. Um, or leading conversations on one of the most reputable platforms on the web. Um, by a lot of people's standards, I am not uh, qualified to do what I do. Um, and I guess you can say that my academic failures were a major fuck up, but even though my academic struggles were a huge stumbling block, that's not necessarily the thing that I want to focus on today. Um, what I really want to focus on is a mistake that nearly cost me everything. And the biggest mistake that I have made is believing that other people knew me better than I knew myself. And just like allowing them to plant seeds in my mind um, that would also lead me to believe that uh, my failures, whether big or small, would be the reason why I'd never, ever be successful. Um, growing up, I struggled a lot mentally. Um, I have found it really hard to believe in myself. I you know, lacked self-confidence. I um, felt overlooked. I felt invisible. I felt misunderstood. And so I would often replay the naysaying I'd heard for years, right? Don't dream too big. Don't aim too high. Uh, don't travel too far from the safe path. And so when my teachers told me I'd never become a writer, I put away my notebooks. My parents freaked out when I wanted to pursue journalism. I, you know, I took a safe route and I settled and I entered my college experience feeling incredibly broken. Um, I hated everything about my program. And I'm sure some of you either feel that way right now or you did. Um, and the only reason why I was there is because I was tired of fighting everyone and I had given into the labels, limitations, and expectations that people had put on me. And so day after day, I would drag myself out of bed. I would sit in these lectures that I cared nothing about. Um, and slowly, I just found myself falling and failing again. Um, I was becoming someone that I didn't want to be. And I was building a life that, honestly, that I was trying to run away from. Um, not trusting myself cost me a lot. Not trusting myself to make shit happen, to figure shit out, it cost me a lot. It cost me time, it cost me energy, um, it cost me self-confidence, 
And it really, it cost me my desire to live, to be honest. Um, I've lived with depression and anxiety my entire life. And um, like, even today, I fight voices inside my head that most people will never understand. And so depression got so bad during my college years. I mean, for those of you who have who, or have experience with mental illness, you'll know that it's a very layered process, right? There's multiple things that contribute to how you feel. Um, and so for me in particular, college was really, really, really tough. And I had buried it and ignored it for so long that one day I just hit a wall and I made the decision that I was gonna end my life. And the only reason why I'm able to stand here today is because of a kind stranger, is because of a kind stranger on a train platform who grabbed the, the small piece of fabric on my backpack, the loop on my backpack, when he saw that I planned to jump. And so that powerful moment was my introduction to second chances. Like I knew they existed. And so I did not want to fuck up my second chance by choosing a life that I no longer wanted to be a part of. And so shortly thereafter, I knew I had some really important decisions that I had to make. And I remember that morning and I remember that classroom because I was, it was my second year of college um, exam week and um, I was looking at my paperwork and I was looking at my computer and I said, yo, like, I'm not going to do this anymore. This is stupid. Like, I made a decision that I was going to drop out of school. I ripped up my paper. And, yo, when I say depression, like, I'm not just talking about the kind of sadness that occurs when your puppy gets sick or when you get a paper cut. That's not the shit I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about crippling, like feeling like you're dying a slow death. And so I ripped up my paper, I walked out of the classroom, and I walked towards the door that represented freedom. And to me, that sh it was just so exhilarating. It was so exciting. But then I now had to answer one of the biggest questions of my life. What's next? And so um, what is next? Um, so. I honestly just wanted, that's my brain, that's your brain, probably. <laughs> um, I took that picture, uh, I posted on Instagram on National Suicide Day. Um, that's me when I was in kindergarten. Um, so I just wanted to feel like a kid again. Like, I didn't know how I was going to figure shit out, but like, I feel like my interpretation of our lives is like oftentimes, you know, before our innocence is stolen by whether it's the media, your parents, your friends, whatever the case may be, you know, we have those few years where we know that we can be anything and everything we want to be. And then we grow up. And we're taught that we now need to be realistic, whatever that is, right? Or we have to subscribe to other people's definition of success. And for me, like, I think the most successful entrepreneurs, the most successful adults have not lost their childlike wonder. And I wanted to get back to that place where I first tapped into the love of writing. That was really, really important to me. And so I knew that on that platform in that classroom, you know, I had a decision to make. I could plug back into the matrix or I could make a decision by, you know, just focusing on what I wanted to do and just like figure it out on my own time. So I chose me and my dream. And honestly, that's the best decision I've ever made. Um, and I've spent the last decade chasing this dream and turning it into a reality. Um, for me, I mean, how did I do it? I don't even know how I did it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> um, on, I was a side hustler for a decade. Right? I would work nine to five. I would, um, I'd work nine to five. I'd come home, work six to midnight for many, many years. Um, I would sit in every sink. So you guys are familiar with Hudson's Bay, obviously. Um, so yeah, so I was the assistant to the president um, and several senior level executives. And so I would sit in every single strategy meeting and take notes. I would have um, informational interviews um, with um, all the senior level executives and learn about their story. Every single vacation day was a business trip for me. I'd established networks in DC, Atlanta, LA, New York, because I saw, like I had a really big vision for myself um, and I wanted to have somewhere to land when I made my transition. And so, um, 
In February, I quit my job. So happy. Um, <laughs> in February, I quit my job, and what I earned out of my side hustle was nearly three times more than my salary. Um, I worked my fucking face off. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, and so honestly, like, again, I want to help people see beyond the limits of their circumstances, right? Like, no matter what you're going through, um, you know, there is life after disappointment. And so uh, this is a picture um, of me and one of the sacrifices that I made. I went into the office knowing that I had, to, that I had a meeting, my first meeting with one of the editors at, uh, at Forbes. And so, but I also knew that I had, my ass had to be in my desk the next morning. Um, so I left work, I went to the airport, Pearson, I took a flight, I got to New York by 7 p.m., spent two hours with the editor, went to LaGuardia, slept on the floor, and took the 6 a.m., and my butt was back at work in the morning by 9. Um, I had to do, by, by any means necessary, I had to fight for what I loved. And so before I wrap up, I just want to go through... Oh, it's me at the office. Um, <laughs> um, out of 2,300 writers, um, 50 of us are senior contributors. I'm one of two women of color. So I... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, and so, yeah, I want to leave you with some, with five really quick lessons before I go. So the first one is your underdog past will be the key to your successful future. Um, I mean, coming from a background of being bullied and tortured in school, um, having my parents, my closest loved ones, like not believe in me at all. Um, you know, my daddy's not rich. I don't have, there's no handouts. Um, you know, I have no degree in journalism. This is all self-taught. Um, I just, again, I want to reinforce that there is life after disappointment no matter what you're going through. The second thing is um, discover your life assignment and commit to it. So I have a, I mean, my, my belief is that there's, you have a job and then you have a life assignment, something you're really pulled and called to do. Your life assignment consists of what you're fighting for and what you're standing on, right? What you're standing on, beliefs, morals, values, what you're fighting for, right? Your dreams, your vision, the life, the legacy you want to build. Um, and so once I realized the difference between the two, nothing was ever the same. Um, remember, no one needs to get it but you. Like, my parents don't even fucking know what I do anymore. Like, and <laughs> they, they never understood, and that's totally okay. Like, honestly, like, your parents will get over it. At first, they'll beef with you, but when you can put a couple stacks in their bank account, they'll be good. Um, <laughs> Uh, raise your hand even when you don't feel uh, qualified, right? So again, exactly everything that you were saying. Um, I've raised my hand every single time, even when my voice shakes, even when I'm scared. Um, and then the last thing is assemble your personal board of advisors. So my key was having sponsors and mentors. Um, so I dropped out of school, I turned the world into my classroom, and I had incredible mentors. I currently have six mentors. Two of my mentors were celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. Um, so. Having mentors, um, both men and women, invest in me and sponsor me, invite me into rooms I probably would have never been invited into um, was really, really important for me and was a really big um, stepping stone in my journey. Um, and so to wrap up, I just want to say that like, I will probably, I will continue to fuck up again and make mistakes. Um, but I mean, it's all about, you know, <laughs> if you can't run, you walk. If you can't walk, you crawl. If you can't crawl, you drag your ass to the finish line and figure it out. Wait, stay here. There's Q and A. <laughs> Pollyanna, thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, I know we've been in touch for a long time, and it's, it was a story that I really wanted our community to hear, and I think it worked out so perfectly with the timing of this event. So really, thank you for sharing that. I think there's so many lessons in there that I think anybody could apply to wherever they are in their life. And I love what you said about having a life assignment and really figuring out what that is and then propelling yourself towards it. So let's open it up to some Q&A for Pollyanna. I'm sure you're all going to have some great questions. So who wants to kick us off with the first question? Awesome. Do you want to grab the one? And then we'll um, yeah, you were saying that you had several mentors. And I was just wondering, where do you even find your mentors? Like, 
to this point, a lot of my girlfriends are saying how their mentors have had a huge impact on their lives. And I know personally, I haven't even, not fair to say not one, but no one that I've really been able to look up to. And that's like the one thing that I really have been hoping to find is a mentor. So I'm wondering how you've been able to find and bring them into your life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in spaces like this, right? Like sometimes it's about connecting with other girlfriends and asking them if they have any recommendations. Like if people don't know what you're looking for, they can't help you because they can't raise your, they can't read your mind. So I was, I've always been very vocal about what I wanted and it's kind of steered me in the direction. When you walk into the direction of your dreams, you attract like books fly off the shelves, you attract people into your life. Um, and it's like a magnetic approach, right? So, I mean, my mentors, I've kind of stumbled across them. I messaged one on Facebook 10 years ago. I went to another event and saw another one on stage and message like, so it's just a matter of, uh, you know, bumping into them um, and be, and actually knowing what you want, right? Understand what you want out of life and reverse engineer it. And like, you want to, just like you would look for qualities in a partner and a friend, it's very important to understand what you look for in a mentor and that person aligns. Um, because of social media, there's a lot of people who think they're leaders, a lot of people talking shit and don't know anything. Um, and so you really want to be clear and be careful who you're taking advice from because they could definitely steer you in the wrong direction. Um, so yeah, so just get very, very clear. Hi, um, I'm just curious if there's anything that you would have done differently. Uh, no, not a damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't change anything because then my result probably would be different. Hi, Pollyanna. Hello? Okay. Um, what's next for you? Of my writing career. Um, so, like, I've written two books. I've been published nationally. I'm now doing the ghostwriting, which is really interesting. Um, what's next for me? I would love to um, get into TV show writing. I find that very, very fascinating. Um, I've also been doing a lot of guest lectures at universities and colleges. So I feel like, you know, down the road, I might want like a part-time um, teaching job because teachers have totally fucked my shit up. And I want to, I want to, <laughs> I do want to be in the classroom. I really want to bring like real world experience um, to the students and like kind of change that conversation. This might be a more personal question, but did you ever talk to that stranger? Uh, the stranger that held onto your fabric. Yeah, uh, we actually lost touch, but at, in the moment, there's a lot of commotion, as you can imagine. Um, but I mean, I will never, I will never forget that moment. Like it, it was so powerful. I mean, I kissed my parents goodbye that morning. Like I remember every single step that I took, you know. And um, I'm very grateful that he, because I, I, I felt so invisible for so long, and for someone to finally see me and have that intuition, it was very, very powerful. Following up here. Hi. Um, Hi. Thank you for sharing your story. So amazing. Um, Two people. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So first of all, thank you so much for sharing your story. It really touched me. Thank you. And uh, my question would be, uh, throughout your journey, you probably uh, faced a lot of rejections and no's. What's your advice how to handle rejection? I mean, rejection is protection, right? Um, when I first published uh, my first novel, I received like 26 no's from different publishers across North America. I ended up self-publishing, and it was actually like a way better path for me. Um, so I just look at rejection as protection, and that like there's a reason why, you know, there's always a hitting blessing and benefit in every circumstance, and like I don't really look at it as like a bad thing. Is it my turn? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, so much for sharing your story. Super powerful, and I'm glad that you're uh, willing to be so vulnerable with such a large crowd of people. Um, my question for you is: After what you felt um, was a failure in your life, how do you deal with failure now? How do you pivot quickly? Um, and how much do you regret decisions that you make after you've made them? Uh, how do I? How do I deal with failure now? Honestly, I mean, entrepreneur. So there's one of my favorite articles on Vast Company is um, the psychological price of entrepreneurship. So like, it's a mind fuck every day, right? And so for like, I cry once a week. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm very. It's it's very very challenging, equally challenging and terrifying and exciting at the same time. 
Um, again, but failure comes with it. Like if I did not have failures, I wouldn't have the successes that I have. You know, I almost look at like the bad times as a down payment for the good times, right? And so I know something better is coming. So I just like, I operate with um, expectancy and anticipation for the next really good thing. I will do one last question. Okay, I see one up here. So I was wondering, because you've been through a lot, but at the end of the day, like, what gives you hope and what gives what when you were going through all of that what gave you hope that there would be like better uh, a better future or like better outcomes in the future yeah i think it's really important to celebrate small victories right um with the emergence of social media and blogging like i really caught that wave and that was really significant for the launch of my journalism career um and so when you look back on your life like i mean there's a roof over your head like there's so many blessings that we can look at so i think honestly like just being practicing um, uh, gratitude, right? Because when you practice gratitude, you attract so much more to be grateful for. Um, so I try to just like have an optimistic view. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.